Subscribe to Grazia and press on the bell icon. I'd like to begin by saying what an honor and absolute pleasure it is to speak with both of you today in one screen. And I'm super excited to know everything about this film. It's an iconic film and this is an iconic creative partnership between you guys after many years. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it. Sabya, I have my first question for you. Um, for starters, you and Rani have shared a very special relationship through the years. Um, you styled various costumes for her, for her films. You designed her wedding outfit and you all share this amazing friendship. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about this creative partnership, uh, how it began and how it's evolved today? So I just want to say that, you know, for the greater part of my career, the first five or seven years when I was uh, establishing my brand, I was known as Rani Mukherjee's tailor. <laughs> and, and, and I loved it. In fact, uh, you know, I come from a Bengali family and at that point of time, Rani was the number one star in Bollywood and she was Bengali. Uh, the whole of Calcutta was obsessed with her. So I think a lot of who I was, who I became, my social respect and everything was the fact that I was doing films with her. Mm -hmm. You know, it helped that, you know, I did, uh, I got my first national award because I dressed her up with black and then we went on to do many more projects. But what, uh, you know, like I have worked with many actresses over the years in Bollywood. But have, uh, having said that, I would say that, you know, Rani has been a lifelong friend. You know, I I think our, our, our relationship uh, extends beyond uh, beyond professionals, professional endeavors. Like throughout the lockdown, throughout many times, you know, when she has her moments of doubt, I have my moments of doubt. We always talk about life, world, everything. And I think it's a great partnership. And... Uh, uh, you know, I missed out on doing Bunty Bubbly 1. Uh, yeah. Rani and Shah come to me at that point of time, but I was setting up a show in New York. I was a little tied up and eventually Aki did it and, you know, it was phenomenal. And in fact, I remember the Bunty Bubbly costumes being all over, the, all over the country, all over the place. And I told Rani that, you know, if you ever do a sequel, you cannot work with anybody apart from me. I didn't ever think that a sequel would happen and now it's happened. And, she <laughs> and I said, why not? Yeah, and we're super excited. Can't wait to watch it. Um, Rani, moving over to you. Um, Bunty or Bubbly, like Sabya said, one of the many iconic dramedies that you star in and now it's making yeah. um, a return to the screen in this very unique way. Um, and you chose to work with Sabya on your costumes for this, which is only fitting. How did this opportunity come about? So actually, the thing is, for me, Sabya is not only uh, my friend, but he's, I think, one of the most iconic designers in the world. Yeah. So I would not just say that he's the best designer in India, because that feels very short for him. He's, he's actually one of the most iconic designers in the world. And what I love about Sabya is that the way he works with Indian fabrics, the Indian prints, everything about him uh, celebrates India. Uh, so to speak, because I think Sabya is one person who I've known for years. And this thing about him hasn't changed in spite of um, the, the places that he's traveled with his clothes and with his you know designs. What is stuck with Sabya is his Indianness and his um, um, love for taking India and making India into the global scene uh, throughout the world through his designs and through his work. So I think he's put India onto the fashion map in a very beautiful way through his work and through his designs. And I feel really, really happy that um, Sabya and me uh, share such a beautiful bond for so many years. His growth in the business or my um, work in my profession, in spite of whatever has happened, I think we, we truly in our hearts are those middle-class Bengali children um, and that's what connects the two of us mostly, you know, the way we are. And I think our accomplishments only uh, make us feel quite shocked that really, did we really achieve this much? Uh, so I think that's that's what Sabya and me both are, you know, and I, and I feel a connect with him because he's very much like me and I'm very much like him. And also probably we are the same age and we are the same kind of uh, people. We've seen the same kind of cinema while growing up and I think his sense of aesthetic is something that I truly, truly admire and love. 
Yeah. And uh, that is that one thing about Sabya, which uh, which I think I would love to use him in all my films. But obviously, he doesn't have the time and the bandwidth to do all films. And his uh, career has taken a different turn. So obviously, he can't do all my films. But when Bunty Bubbly Two happened, I actually wanted the clothes to become iconic because uh, if you've seen the way cinema has evolved, yeah. uh, I don't think uh, there is much importance given to a look in a film in, in such way because everything has become very real and you know very something that people need to relate with. So Bunty B- Bubbly gave me an opportunity to again go back to that era and time where the clothes can get iconic, you yeah. know, because Vimmi is that character. She she's taken fashion really seriously in her life yeah. so vimmi is a character who is completely like um, she gets turned on by you know fashion <laughs> and she believes that she's the queen of fashion and you know fursat ganj the place where she belongs to yeah. and from the first part where she wanted to become miss india and from the time that she could not become so she has this nagging thing about that i need to create the designs that i wear which is vimmi's character yeah and in the film um what we kind of put in as a character is that she's a big sabhasachi fan yeah and she copy and paste his work and she makes her own clothes in her own house in a rowing swing machine yeah but she gives it her own touch like aka sabhasachi she she calls her fashion to be vimmi's fashions right you know and that's when i really told sabhya that i need you to do this for me and as a friend he stepped in and i must tell you he was um just a dream to work with because we spoke on the phone he like ideated and he said okay this is what i want to do this is what i want to do and believe you me in 20 days my entire film costumes were ready with wow. clothes shoes accessories and hats that's amazing which i think sabha will tell you where the inspiration of the clothes came from which is which is what i'd like him to say Yeah. but um, i think there could be no better fit than sabya to do this and i'm just so so happy and glad that he's part of bunty bubble too i agree i agree and you encapsulated that beautifully your friendship and whatever you said about the character and how he's worked on it um so sabya um, it's been 15 i think over 15 years since the the original the fourth bunty bubble came out and like you mentioned the costumes in that were extremely trend setting and really vibrant and now you've had the opportunity to work on the second the sequel um what was your vision for rani's costumes in this film you know i was born in 74 so the kind of movies that we have seen at our generation when we were youngsters teenagers we you know we've gone to single theater films mm-hmm. and you know there used to be uh, front stall middle stall rear stall balcony and uh, i remember that uh, you know when we used to see when we used to watch movies of rani and shri devi and madhuri and govinda and bitton amitabh zinatman all of these people you know people used to throw coins they used to celebrate there was no hoity toity film goer everybody went to see a film it was almost like going and watching a football or a cricket match you know everybody an opinion everybody commented about every scene people stood up and clapped only to be slapped by somebody from the back ki badja you know this is the this is the kind of movies that we have seen and very sadly like you know throughout all the movies that i've done you know it's probably because of the intellectual quotient of the brand that i have never been offered a masala film i have always done even with bansali i have done films which are which are almost fringe films like let's say black guzarish you know i've 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 worked with the likes of gauri shinde balki uh, mani ratnam i have never i've always wanted to do a dhamaka movie you know like i won't even call it a 100 crore film 200 crore film a film where people would dance city maro throw coins you know cheesy dialogues and then uh, bunty bubbly happened and you know for me it was a wish come true because you know i you know there's a film that i relate to because that's the kind of movies that we saw growing up i think globally there's a reversal of everything that's happening people you know uh, also this uh, mind you this comes uh, for the depression of covid and i think musicals are going to be such a big important uh, thing you know people want to just get, uh, let their hair down and uh, watch movies as therapy and i'm glad that i've been a part of this fun therapy session I, you know for me uh, for me the most you know like we are we are very largely copied design house in the country yeah. and to be able to 
do a film where I'm actually making the clothes. Look at the irony. Yeah. Sabisachi is making the clothes for a person who copies Sabisachi's clothes. And, <laughs> and for me, I, you know, I didn't miss the humor. And also I thought that what would Vimi do? You know, so she would copy everything that Sabya did. So, we, you know, we are known for our iconic floral prints. So me and Rani debated that it should be floral prints because prints are the cheapest and the easiest way to create an impact. And she's a girl from Fursat Ganj, so she doesn't have the kind of money and resources to do couture. So prints it would be. And then I saw that, you know, she would be topical. The biggest news for Indian fashion in a long time was the H&M Sabesachi collaboration. So we decided we'll take a little spin from there because, you know, Vimi would be somebody who would be watching magazines and whatever she could. Uh, what, if she had a smartphone, she would be watching things that was happening. And she would say, oh, I want the latest. Yeah. And then we had the Bengal Tiger as a logo. I always thought that... Vimi and also Rani in real life is quite catty. So we decided that we'll do a logo and the logo was a cat. You know, yeah. a cat. <laughs> so Vimi also copied the logo and she said, Uske paas Bengal tiger hai, to mere paas kitten hai. Because I'm the coolest cat. <laughs> and so in our head, we played the character. What could she take from the brand? And me and Rani both decided that it would be loud, boisterous, tacky, funny, exuberant, Yet at the same time, you know, you look at that girl and you can't help smile and yeah. admire her confidence and her guts. Yeah. In fact, you know, when the promo came, I saw Rani with the beehive hair and I almost fell down laughing. And then I saw Rani in the tattoo song. And, you know, I, I started running on my treadmill every day. It's just behind me. <laughs> I said, okay, I have to run that extra kilometer now. Because if Rani can look so good after a baby, I have no excuse to say that I can be fat. <laughs> No, but you know, to like Sabya's credit, you know, our conversations would be, okay, so we have to do this, but it can't look like your creation, Sabya. You know, right. it, it cannot look like, you know, um, uh, classy. It can't look uh, uh, like, you know, how Sabya brings in, you know, that this beauty. So Sabya, poor thing, had to work backwards to make his own creation look tacky. Yeah. You know, which I give full credit so much to fun. him. Yeah. You know, because I kept telling him, Sabya, you can't use your borders. You can't use the borders on the clothes, you know, because they're too nice. So you have to find, so he said, no, no, I'm going to find some tacky border and I'm going to put it. <laughs> so he's actually worked very hard to, yeah. to revamp his own thinking of how, if somebody would copy his clothes, how would it be, right. you know, without having his resources. So right. even the colors that he uses, you know, because uh, like Sabya is known to make his own colors in his, you know, factory. Yeah. Uh, for his clothes. So for him to actually decide ki, okay, I can't give those lovely, beautiful colors. I have to make those colors tacky. Mm -hmm. I think all kudos to like Sabya for <laughs> being able to pull this off. Really. I and I recently went for the Kapil Sharma show mm -hmm. uh, to promote the film. Nice. And you know, there's a character called Shumona, yeah. uh, the actress, yeah. you know, who, who plays, uh, I don't know what, she, she plays a particular character. So she was dressed in that whole Vimmi attire. <laughs> You know, from head to toe, the cap, the, you know, floral print, uh, uh, kurta and the bell bottom pants and everything. So it was just so cool. And I just saw that and I'm like, thank God this thing has worked. So if people are copying the look, means it's going to become iconic for sure. It is. It is. It's impactful already before the film has released. So that, that says something. Um, yeah. And it's amazing how invested Rani you've been in this design process you know and I think that's so fantastic in molding the clothing and the character I think it's amazing yeah because I feel that a, a character becomes a character with how she looks first because that's 50% of the battle one because you need to look like that character and that can only happen when your your hair your makeup and your costume team they kind of blend and they make you into that character that you're playing yeah. So I, I I have to go away from Rani yeah. and become Vimmi. And I can only do that if yeah. I have the support of this core team of mine, which is clothes, makeup and hair. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So yeah. At this point, I yeah. just want to interject that, you know, this has happened with me and Rani many times in the films that we've done. So, you know, as designers, we come with our own creative ego that, oh, we are going to do this and we are going to do that. And then Rani will suddenly come and say, not working. And I was like, why? 
She said, no, it's just not going to translate on screen. This is not the character. And, you know, over the years, I've learned to listen to her. You know, initially in the beginning, it used to be like, you know, I wouldn't say it was offensive, but it was hard to come up with something with a hero and says, it doesn't work. And then, you know, when I used to look at it on screen, I used to realize what she's talking about. Yeah. And then I realized that, you know, it's the voice of experience, you know, because as, as uh, seasoned actresses, they they internalize the character more than we do because they live the character much before the character goes on screen. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned to listen to these voice of wisdom. So when she says that, you know, we want this input or I want to do that, I don't even question her anymore because I just realized that, you know, there is something called the voice of experience that supersedes our voice of fashion because uh, at the end of the day, you know, one of the big, the hardest thing for a fashion designer to do is to probably break his ego and do a film where you pay homage to the character and not your own creativity and but with Rani it's always been easy because she's been so thoroughly involved she you know even if you think that she she probably doesn't get it but at the end of the day when you see it on screen you know exactly from the beginning what she was talking about and it's ma magical I love that process yeah. yeah that sounds amazing um Rani let's talk a little bit about Wimmy you know we see her return to the screen and from what I saw a little bit in the trailer she still has all yeah facets of her personality. Yeah, she's fully cracked. She's fully mad. Yeah, so she's still playful, boisterous, witty. How yes. has it been, you know, to revisit that character after so many years? Actually, I was, um, uh, you know, when Bandi Bubbly was offered to me, yeah. uh, I had just finished uh, filming Margani 2. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time where I had to reprise the character which I'd already done previously. So I was wondering... Uh, with like each of my characters, I, I, I give it my 100% and then I move on to the next. Sure. So I don't keep any remnants of the previous work that I've done because I have to again challenge myself and be a new new character in a new film. But when Mardani came to me, I was like, oh my God, so I have to now take Shivani Shivaji Roy to a different way. Like, you know, she has to be different in this film. Yeah. So we changed this sl slightly and we made her a superintendent of police. Mm -hmm. So, with, so by being superintendent of police, there again comes different variations in what I can change yeah. from the first to the second part. Yeah. So when Bubbly was offered to me, when Vimmi's character was offered to me again, so it was, we leave Vimmi in Bundy Bubbly 1 as a mother of a two-year-old. Two yeah. And in that, if you remember, there was a scene where she scolds a child and she says, Are thandu mar goli zara fashion karna seek. Yeah. When the child is wanting to wear a sweater, and she's trying to tie the sweater on his waist. Yeah. So she, you know, you leave her there. Yeah. You know, and that's the last um, like, like impression you have of Vimmi from the first. Yeah. So when we did, so when the character of uh, Vimmi came to me in the second part, after so many years. Yeah. So now I was reprising a role of a mother of a 10-year-old. Right. So obviously she has grown in, in life. Like a husband is going through a midlife crisis. Yeah. She obviously is also going through the same, but she refuses to believe that herself. Right. That's why she covers up her midlife crisis by trying to look really like a you know fataka. Yeah. You know she wears false eyelashes. You know she <laughs> puts glitter on her nails. Yeah. You know, like she blow dries her hair. She puts rollers on her hair. So she's trying to um, give her life a little zing yeah. by you know making sabesachi clothes. By, yeah. you know, trying to be it, you know, and she doesn't want to believe that she's going through any crisis of that sort, you know. She yeah. believes that she's the queen, you know, and her husband has put on weight. He's, you know, got a little belly, but she believes that she is just not aged a bit, you yeah. know. And I love that about Vimmi because, because that's very real. So when you see the film, you will see uh, that there's a girl who has probably, you know, not lost that uh, love of life. Like, you know, that's that fun of life in, in, in her present life. And she's going through it. But there is a hint of sadness um, that is there because a woman who is actually um, kind of going through a crisis in that sense that she's aged, yeah. uh, you know, but she's still trying to do as much as she can for her husband, you know, for the love. So yeah. I think that makes her very, very vulnerable to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that's her uh, spirit, you know. That's the beauty of Bunty Bhagli 2 as in Vimmi's character. Yeah. And I really connected with that. And I thought that that's something that a lot of women will, you know, relate with. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, how, how much ever beautiful you are in life, 
you know, a woman will always have a little insecurity towards her husband, you know, that, oh, is he like, you know, getting attracted to somebody younger or, you know, is he getting attracted to somebody, um, you know, half her age, you know, something like that. So I think that is something very beautifully caught by Varun in the script. Yeah. You know, like the story um, made Vimi, um, like she needed to be like this, a little loud with her clothes and with her appearance because you kind of get a culmination in the second half of the film where she kind of admits to it. Yeah. That, you know, this is what she does for the attention that she wants from her husband. Yeah. You know, so I, I thought that was very cute about her. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait to watch that on the big screen. I've <laughs> got a message to wrap up the interview. So my last question is for you, Sabya. Um, a little bit about what Rani spoke about earlier, you know, this evolution of costume in film. And say 15 years ago, it was super trend setting and that's where we as an audience and as a consumer took all our inspiration from. But now we live in really different times with, you know, social media kind of just dominating the entire scene. So as somebody who's worked on costumes for this film and as a designer, um, how do you kind of do justice to the narrative while kind of keeping it contemporary and making it then iconic? See, it's very simple. As a designer, you need to choose the kind of work that, you, you know, like, for instance, a lot of us, uh, what has happened to cinema today, you know, you, you have to really work with a costume designer and not a fashion designer anymore, because earlier at one point of time, there was a big need for glamour. And then cinema became very real. And as when cinema becomes very real, the department of costume becomes a very challenging thing for a designer, because it, you know, it, you need to work with people who worked as costume designers, it's a completely different. It's a completely different graph. It's a completely different industry. But having said that, I think you know uh, if you look at if you look at everything if, if you look at post-war, and I'm saying this to you today as a consumer, not as an inside in, 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 uh, industry insider. Mm -hmm. I think there is a little need for mindlessness, celebration, dance, music, fun, because we've gone through such a big crisis that you know everybody now wants to go into a cinema to have fun, celebrate, you know, lo uh, leave their worries behind. I think I, th I think globally we have got into a very complicated society thanks to social media, thanks to everything that's happening around us. I think people need to be able to let their hair loose. So I think cinema will also go through its renaissance where it's going to become pure entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, there will be a scope for fashion designers to come back and dream the big dream. Yeah, yeah. And we can only look forward to that, like much needed. No, no, I'm just too, I'm just too lucky and uh, blessed that Sabya did this film for me because I wanted somebody to create a look. And creating looks can only be done by true blue uh, designers with no offense to uh, stylists. But, but when it comes to designing a look, it has to be a designer. You know, stylists can, you know, just put, a, you know, um, like a look together. We'll so, together. So I would die if uh, Sabya would not do this film. <laughs> I would literally die. Yeah, I Sabya, think... I don't know, you've really, really saved my boat. Like you've saved me, you were my savior with Banti <laughs> Babli 2. No, you saved to save me too. You, you saved me too, Rani. I think I'm taken too seriously in the industry. <laughs> I think I want to also show people that I'm more than what you think I am. So thank you <laughs> for the opportunity. <laughs> We're very excited to see what this film has in store and can't wait to see it on the big screen. And thank you once again, both of you for taking out the time and having this conversation with us. No, I'm actually loving this interview so much that I don't want to stop. <laughs> I wish we I know could. You know, there is a constraint of time because when Sabya is there, I can talk for hours. Yeah. Like we get, get onto the phone at times, you know, when he has some time and I have some time off. We yeah. can go on for two, two hours on the phone. We're only chatting. <laughs> so now also I feel like we can like go on for hours. We can just yeah. keep on talking. Those are I know Sabya is busy. And, and all these people are waiting that I have to do some thousand interviews after this. I'm sure. So have to get out. I'm sure. But thank you guys. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. And can't wait to see the film. And yeah. Thank and you. thank you, Grazia, for thank doing you. this. Thank you. And Tanya, of course. Thank you for being so wonderful and doing this lovely interview with Sabya and me. And Sabya and me are matching. Yeah. I you know. Know. And, white. White. and I'm wearing Sabya's creation, of course, to do of his interview. Course. Of course. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.
Bye.